I adore Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Ziz's second, third, fifth, and sixth worlds. That's not to say I find the first and fourth worlds bad, far from it. Tropical Freeze has been praised on the YouTube platform for good reason. Its brilliant blending of spectacle and challenge update 2D platformers to a more cinematic age without sacrificing what made the games great. It's just those two worlds in specific have some issues that make them a bit... off compared to the rest. For Seabreeze Cove, that reason is obvious. Please don't put that many water levels in one big clump. Having a water world is fine, but water levels are pace breakers as is. Stacking a bunch in a row rather than spreading them out through the game obliterates the idea of pacing. For Lost Mangroves? Well, that question becomes a lot more complicated. Not a single level is really bad in it. The difficulty curve is rather nice for a first world, and it does a good job introducing all of the new Kongs and powers and movement options. But there's something about it that never really clicked for me, and I feel that warrants exploring. The Lost Mangroves ooze with sensibilities from previous Donkey Kong countries, new ideas, and fantastic set-piece moments. But though it has style, it has no grace. Lost Mangroves consists of eight levels, including two secret levels, the Kong Temple level and the boss. And of these, Zipline Shrine, Trunk Twister, Big Top Bop, and Swinger Flinger are completely fantastic levels. Big Top is an expansion of the boss concepts developed in Donkey Kong Country Returns, creating a nice little survival gauntlet and playing well with the idea of DK's health system. Max of four with a friend, max of two alone. This keeps a level of dramatic tension up no matter the player's health, and makes for a good survival situation as the player learns patterns, probably gets hit, prays that one of these enemies drops health, and allows for the boss to be much longer without feeling agonizing. Swinger Flinger and Trunk Twister are levels of pure reflex and constant motion, where the player is rewarded for both going with the flow of the level and noticing small deviations in patterns and reacting in time to nab Kong letters and puzzle pieces. But of these, Zipline Shrine stands out to me, as it works as an antithesis to the rest of the levels in Lost Mangroves. The level starts with an interesting set piece in this banana statue that releases magical banana spirits, or something, that you chase around the level. These create an active element for DK to follow, a floating trail of bananas guiding DK through the level and encouraging his forward momentum. Kong letters are all placed within this path as well, giving DK great incentive to tackle the level as optimally as possible in one momentum-charged run. The flow of this level is immaculate, and is carried over through a majority of Tropical Freeze's later levels, letting it come into its own as a game. That leaves us with four stages. Mangrove Cove, Shipwreck Shore, Canopy Chaos, and Busted Bayou that fall under scrutiny. Let's start at the very beginning, as I'm told it's a very good place to start, with Mangrove Cove. Now, I'm not gonna knock the set design for this stage. Everything from DK busting out of the wrecked plane to the whole Bermuda Triangle setting is fantastic, as is the fact that you don't encounter the new Snowmads until the end of the level, after DK and Diddy have crashed into them, letting you play a bit with the natural world before throwing you against the game's main enemy. My main issue stems from the fact that, as a level, it's just not all that great. Yes, it does do a good job of showing off Tropical Freeze's new features. The level starts you off by tossing you into a pool of water to swim in, DK has a segment where he grabs onto things, there's this segment that introduces ground pounding, Kong Pow moves, Diddy, camera changing spectacle sequences... But it does so as kind of a world tour of features, rather than easing the player in. Each of these concepts is introduced individually, and with the possible exception of Diddy, the player is going to stop, assess the situation, and then do what the game is telling it to. 
In fact, if you try to speedrun the level to beat this game's time trial, it's oddly incredibly difficult, just because of the starting and stopping necessary to beat the stage. Now you might be thinking, but designing 4, that's good for a tutorial level. You have a 20 minute video saying why that's good. You even mention another Donkey Kong Country game as a great example of that. Yeah, stick it to the man. Well, thank you, overly loyal straw man viewer. And you're right, tutorial levels should let the player move around at their own pace. However, Tropical Freeze is an incredibly momentum-based platformer, where adjusting and moving forward is often the solution. So many of Tropical Freeze's levels, the aforementioned good levels of Lost Mangroves included, constantly push the player forward, often letting them hesitate only once or twice before tossing them into the fray. Giving them essentially infinite time teaches the player the mechanics of the game, but not the flow of it, and creates a kind of disconnect from both the more individualized obstacles of previous Donkey Kong Country games, and the more streamlined and strung together obstacles of Tropical Freeze. Waiting around gets you killed in this game. And while Mangrove Cove does do a good job in luring the player to explore every nook and cranny, these are often out of the way enough that the player's momentum will just be totally stopped. Ultimately, this just means that the first level feels too safe and too slow, which doesn't do an amazing job of selling the rest of the game afterward. This is especially true of Shipwreck Shore, where the player has to constantly go in and out of the water. Water is an odd mixture of methodical and frantic in Tropical Freeze. It's the first DKC game to feature an air beater, pressuring the player to keep moving forward, but DK moves with such a different finesse in the water compared to his roll-jumping, lumbering, big, grounded ape self that burst momentum is far less possible. This makes for a pretty consistent interruption of a player's flow and the fact that many secrets are hidden in these otherwise optional underwater segments makes for a lot more start and stop gameplay. Also, the G here is located after the secret exit, which means you'll probably have to beat the whole level twice. That's totally a nitpick, but, but it bugs me, okay? The same flow interruption also applies to Busted Bayou's various set pieces, requiring DK to finish his pulling animation and wait for stuff to fall or rise, emphasizing the stop-and-go feel that's less in the player's control than, well, stop-and-go station. But despite this lack of agency, I mean, look at it. Organic level design and theming is incredible here, and the music is amazing! I can't be too harsh on that when it does its job of being damn pretty to look at, even if it makes sure I'm appreciating every single detail. That leaves us with Canopy Chaos, where I feel the idea of mangroves as a starting world is most misguided. The level serves as a tutorial for Cranky Kong, teaching the features of his pogo stick jump and how it ignores spike surfaces. And overall, it does that very well. Cranky barrels are plentiful and posted right after checkpoints, and the old geezer is very fun to use through it with how his cane hurls the player forward. The problem is... The level sucks if you don't have Cranky, DK not being able to take advantage of the level's many set pieces on his own, having to take a slower and ultimately less fulfilling way around. You can argue that this is a fair punishment. You lose Cranky, you gotta deal with a less fun level until you pick him up again. But in the first world of the game, where Tropical Freeze is trying to establish a consistent tone with its levels, this feels needlessly restrictive. Other Donkey Kong Country titles Animal Buddies serve much the same role as Cranky, temporary power-ups suited to the design of a level to use their unique forms of movement for a more fun experience. But those levels were still fun to play without your buddy, whereas Canopy Chaos is a slog without Cranky that hits neither the snappy moment-to-moment -moment challenges of the original trilogy, nor the incredible momentum Tropical Freeze has. And no pogo in general means that Funky Mode just totally butchers this stage. Bummer. Now, all of these might sound like nitpicks, and they absolutely are. 
Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is an amazing game, and ultimately the criticisms I'm levying against it are minuscule compared to the overall quality of the title. But the Lost Mangroves just have an inconsistency to them that keeps me from truly enjoying a fresh replay of the game from start to finish, and I feel like just a bit of tweaking could help. Maybe you could extend the concepts taught to a few mini-levels, have each Kong work their way back to DK after he makes his presence known, meaning that you never have to lose Cranky and Canopy Chaos, that you're not balancing five other concepts on top of Diddy, that Solo Dixie can be playable in a meaningful way for the first time since 1996. Perhaps consolidate the water sections to a single, mainly underwater level. There are little things that could be polished here, just to give the sense of flow that the later worlds of Tropical Freeze embody so well. This is a fantastic game. I just want to be able to tell friends something other than, you'll know it's right for you or not a few levels into the second world. First impressions are everything, and while Tropical Freeze does give off a strong front cinematically, the overall structure of the mangroves can only design for gracelessness.